Hi everyone, welcome to Write by Mia. I'm Mia and this is the first monthly installment of the Writer's Library where I'll be sharing my takes on some of my favorite books. And this month we have da -da -da -da, Another Country by James Baldwin. Now I know most of you are probably expecting me to start with a Toni Morrison novel, but no worries. She will definitely be coming up in future videos. Uh, so first, just some brief background on Baldwin um, as well as the novel itself. This definitely isn't any sort of you know book report or book summary. I really just want to share with you all what I love about the novel and hopefully get you interested in it as well. Uh, so Baldwin was a very prolific black queer writer who wrote in the mid 20th century about race, politics and sexuality um, and he's definitely one of the greats. He is a favorite author of mine and Another Country um, is definitely one of my favorite novels by him. So just some brief background on the novel itself. Um, it basically revolves around a cast of artists, both black and white, and their struggles with their artistry, race, and sexuality, both in Harlem and Greenwich in New York in the States, as well as in France. And there's a pretty varied cast of characters. We have Rufus, who is a black musician and very sort of aggressive and violent in his relationship to whiteness and white people. Um, we also have Valdo, who, funnily enough, is white and one of Rufus's best friends. He is also a struggling novelist, and we see his journey with that throughout the novel. Um, we then have Leona who is a white southerner and Rufus's lover. Spoiler alert, their relationship doesn't end up too happy or too well. We then have Ida Scott, who is Rufus's younger sister and an aspiring singer. She is also Vivaldo's lover um, throughout the novel. So as you can kind of hear and see, we have a lot of complicated relationships and tensions and dynamics going on already and those are really you know played out um, throughout the novel. We also have the Selenskys who are a white married couple, Cass and Richard, and the fractures and kind of cracks in their marriage are starting to show as Richard gains success in his own writing. Um, and last but not least we have Eric and Eve, excuse me, all the French speakers, um, who are lovers in France and we kind of touch upon them um, at some points throughout the novel. And I guess now I really want to get into what I absolutely love about this novel um, and, you know, why I wanted to read it and share it with you guys. So first was just sort of the, the concept of individualism and how masterfully Baldwin is able to sort of, you know, encapsulate um, and really understand how individual relationships, you know, and individual wants and needs are subsumed under societal pressures. I mean, you can imagine, you know, 1950s New York, you know, you're definitely dealing with a lot, you know, of race and racism and all those structural elements. And I think, you know, the most poignant way he does it is in these little moments when it's not as direct, but you can just feel the sort of overwhelming pressures of society sort of bearing down on these, you know, relationships of which, you know, you heard a lot of them are interracial. So story time, I do want to read a little part of what I mean when he talks about this sort of, you know, societal outside pressure really affecting um, these individual relationships. Once absolutely beside himself, Vivaldo had beaten from the landing to the streets a boy who stood in the hot shadow of the landing, his hands in his pockets and his eyes on Ida, or rather on the spot from which with a furious cry and a curse, she had hastily removed herself. The boy had not taken his hands from his pockets, only kept up a small, ugly animal moaning, and fallen when Vivaldo had pushed him through the street door, heavily on one shoulder. The police came shortly afterward, their own combustible imagination stiffening their ready civic pride. After that, they kept the doors not only closed, but locked. Yet the entire shapeless, unspeakable city seemed to be in the room with them some summer nights. 
So at this point, Vivaldo and Ida are kind of living together. And I think it's just beautiful how in sort of this small moment you see, even as they're trying to work on their relationship or build some sort of life in their own apartment, they are just accosted um, by the outside and everything that that means. Um, and I think it's just really beautiful how Baldwin paints that picture um, without being too direct. He does it in this beautiful, small way. So beside that kind of broader theme of individualism and, you know, how to accept it within, you know, the context of society, um, another aspect I really like is the global aspect of the novel. The majority, you know, of the time we are in Harlem and Greenwich, you know, dealing with all of these different artists, um, but we do spend some time in France, actually, and I think it definitely mirrors what Baldwin did in his life many times. He you know, went outside of the U.S., had to escape all that was happening and was really able to find, you know, some sense of peace and solace in, you know, France or other parts of the world that he traveled. Um, and I think it's mirrored in the book. I felt while reading those parts about France, a bit of a breather, um, you know, a, a bit of a break from all of, you know, the, the, you know, strife going on back in the States with these other characters. And I just really enjoyed having that breather. Um, and I think it just really, you know, does a great job of underlining, you know, how we can think about blackness and, and race differently when given sort of a global context, as opposed to always narrowly focusing on, you know, the state of race in America. And last but not least, one of, you know, the big reasons I love this novel is just the artistry of it. You know, not only do we have the characters in the book who are artists, I also think there's just a great commentary on how beautiful art is when it is created in spite of all the difficulty. We have novelists in here, we have musicians in here who are just struggling with themselves and, and what they want to be. And it's really emphasized and sort of relayed to us through their work. And I believe that this kind of speaks to hopefully artists, you know, presently where we kind of use what's going on, what we're dealing with, um, and, and speak with it um, through our art. And I think that's a really beautiful thing um, that Baldwin does, that despite everything, our art is truly ours and, and can really be something where we can express the, the fullest part of ourselves. And last story time, I do want to read a part um, where a musician is playing and I think just demonstrates this, this point beautifully. He stood there, wide-legged, humping the air, filling his barrel chest, shivering in the rags of his 20-odd years and screaming through the horn, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And again, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? This anyway was the question Rufus heard, the same phrase unbearably, endlessly, and variously repeated with all the, the force the boy had. The silence of the listeners became strict with abruptly focused attention. Cigarettes were unlit and drinks stayed on the tables. And in all of the faces, even the most ruined and most dull, a curious, wary light appeared. Yeah, I don't know if there's much to comment on um, besides how beautiful art can become out of pain um, and how everyone can sit up and take notice when they really know your true heart of what you're creating. And I think on a meta level, that's what artistry does. Um, that's what artists and, and novelists like Baldwin and, and Toni Morrison do. And that's one of the main reasons that um, I love literature and why I wanted to become a writer in the first place. So I hope you guys, you know, learned a little something about Baldwin, another country, about me. I really enjoyed sharing this time with you. Um, and, you know, I hope you're interested enough to read it. And if not, then I'm glad I got to share it with you. I encourage you all to like and subscribe. I'll be dropping these videos monthly on different books and authors, and I can't wait to share them with you. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.